JPL does mainly robotic missions, so JPL did not take part directly in the Apollo uh, man missions, which were managed by the Johnson Space Center. But JPL did help a lot. Historically, our role in Apollo was to do the precursor missions, the rangers and surveyors. Uh, the rangers were designed to impact the moon, uh, but as they approached the moon, they took very high resolution images that really showed uh, what the surface of the moon was like. Because before then, uh, we had observations from telescopes that didn't show you that the surface of the moon was actually full of boulders that the uh, landers would have to avoid. And the surveyors were soft landers, uh, so they were designed to, to test uh, landing on the moon and uh, what the soils would be like, uh, what the composition uh, uh, would be like. So they were extremely uh, important to enable the Apollo landings. It would have been much more dangerous to uh, land the Apollo missions without those precursors uh, because, you know, when you land on a planetary surface, that's a potentially dangerous thing to do. And uh, you really have to have good knowledge uh, of the surface. On the topic of future moon landings, uh, first of all, we have two types of programs at NASA. Uh, we have the, the crewed missions, uh, carrying people, and we have the robotic missions. So, uh, it, uh, you know, the robotic missions is mainly what JPL does. And the robotic missions are for science, primarily. Um, we can do some engineering tests, but they are primarily for science. And they are actually uh, cheaper to do than the crewed missions, because you can take more risk. Uh, now, whether we're going to go back to the moon with astronauts, uh, I, I hope so. Uh, but it depends on uh, resources becoming available. And on the question of going to the moon first or going to Mars first, both places are interesting. And uh, of course, in terms of human exploration, uh, going to the moon and going to Mars uh, would be great, absolutely great. We want to go to Mars. Uh, we want to go back to the moon. Uh, on the moon, we can establish a, a longer term presence because the moon is much closer, uh, the moon is much easier to get to, is less risky for the astronauts, and uh, the moon can also serve as a testing ground uh, because it's been nearly 50 years since we have sent astronauts to another body. Uh, in the last decades, astronauts have gone to the space station. Um, so maybe we should uh, go to the moon first and actually test out uh, 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 you know, our human program, uh, and then go to Mars. Uh, there are different opinions about this, uh, but missions to Mars are certainly a lot more risky. The astronauts have to be in space a lot longer, uh, so you have to worry about physiological aspects and, uh, uh, you know, many other things that you don't have to worry about uh, if you go to the moon, which is so much closer. How long it would take to go back to the moon, say the moon with a, a, a human um, a crewed mission, uh, it, it, that's largely a matter of resources. Uh, if you think about it back to the Apollo days and how quickly that was done in the 1960s when we didn't have the technology uh, at all, uh, I mean, that was a, a huge challenge. Uh, you know, and, and looking back on it, uh, you, you almost don't understand how it could be done. But it was done because uh, a lot of people worked on it, a lot of smart people, and there was a very large budget. Uh, whether that kind of effort is realistic today uh, is uh, not a matter.